the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On a Sunday like today, I stand here and I feel this is not, this is not part of my sermon. This is not written in my script. But I feel, what am I doing trying to stand here telling you about how Christ will come and judge the world? This is the third Sunday of the Holy Triodium, called the Sunday of the Last Judgment, Ahad al Dainuni. It is also called Meat Fair Sunday because it is the last day we, we lift the meats off our tables and abstain from them until Pascha. It is a Sunday in which the Lord gives us Himself a real image of the final and the last judgment that will be for each and every one of us when Christ our Lord will come in all his glory like we say in the creed and he shall come again in glory to judge the living and the dead this judge himself is telling us that there will be a judgment and he is also telling us how he will judge us. The lesson or the reminder is simply, it's very important that if at least we remember the following, that there will be a judgment. We often forget that. We often like to make out our own images. We create certain criteria of how Christ should judge the world. So often you hear interpretations trying to have a different reading of the text. text. The text is very clear, it doesn't need a reading, it doesn't need explanation. The scriptures and the church's understanding of the scriptures are quite clear and yet simple. If we want eternal life, if we want eternal life, we must strive to learn while still being on this earth to love our neighbor, to love the other person, our fellow human being, the way Christ loves them, the way Christ loves me, and in a way that I see Christ in them. This is the crown of all virtues. And it is the only proof that we believe in God. And it is the only acceptable fruit of all our spiritual labors and prayers and fasts. Christ will separate the sheep from the goat. And this separation is something we decide. He announces it, but we, we announces it, but we make the decision. The last judgment is the de- announcement of your decision. And the criteria are actually not, in a way, they're not that heavy or difficult. Christ tells me, love others. These are my beloved, and I love you and them. Love them, because if you cannot love them, you simply will not be able to love me. Christ would say and you will be denying your own salvation because salvation is eternal life is merely abiding in my love so I want you to be with me so please love them we can imagine the Lord telling us this is what it is your way upwards is actually sideways that's how we understand it. 
sideways. Your way upwards goes sideways. The path to heaven is not vertical, but horizontal. It goes through your fellow human being. Your wife, your husband, your children, your parents, your siblings, your cousins, your friends, your co-workers, your fellow parishioner, your acquaintance, and your enemy. It is all about the other. In, a very, in over, overly simplified words, you are my ticket to heaven and I am your ticket to heaven. And the four pre-Lenten Sundays ahead of Dahi al Saum all speak to that. The Pharisee, he fell when he compared himself to his brother, the tax collector. The older son fell when he was jealous from his younger son's repentance, younger brother's repentance. Today, we are reminded that feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, and lending a heart and an ear to the imprisoned and the sick are the criteria for our salvation. And next week, we will be reminded that the inability to forgive others is a major obstacle for our salvation. It all goes through the other, through the neighbor, through the brother and sister. And there is no other way. Even Soul Saturday, yesterday, that we prayed, Sabta Raqidin, falls also in the same category. Those who departed this life, we love them and we offer them our prayers and our best. Their salvation is connected to our salvation and our salvation is connected to their salvation. It's all about the other. One might argue that it is easier to be spiritual and to fast and to pray and to quote the canons of the church and to quote, be, know the Holy Fathers by heart and all the lives of the saints and all the prayers of the church. That's probably easier than the difficult task. How these things that I just mentioned having a spiritual life, fasting, praying, reading the lives of the saints, reading the Bible all the time, memorizing the Bible. How does this transform? How does this transform you to love the other, to love the other human being, to serve them, not to avoid them, not to envy them, not to have a grudge, not to judge them, how does your faith, how does your spiritual labors, how do they lead you to lend a hand, to give your money, to forgive your oppressor, to kill your ego, and to love the person that you cannot love? That's the question. Some think that the goal of, the, of our life as Christians is to live with Christ, have a relationship with God. I pray, I fast, I talk to Him. I have a relationship with Christ, that's the goal. And as a byproduct of that is, you know, okay, I, it means I'm going to try to love others and be nice to others. One might argue that the goal is to learn how to love others and your relationship with Christ, your prayers to Him, and your spiritual labors, your fastings, your readings, are means towards the goal. The goal is loving the brethren. The goal is loving the brethren. And if anyone has a doubt that the goal is loving the brethren, Matthew 25, what we just read. Crystal clear. Last day, judge sat down. Did he say how many services you attended? He didn't. How many fasts did you do? He didn't. How did you love your brother? He didn't say that. Did you feel the hungry? He said that. It's plain words. It's not a philosophical text that we can interpret. 
Now, of course, it is very important, as always, to warn against the misunderstanding of, of, this, of what I just said, of these words. The criteria is love. المعيار للخلاص هو المحبة. شو يعني تؤمن بالمسيح؟ إنك تحبه. What does it mean to believe in Christ? To love Him. The criteria is love. But one cannot acquire this criteria, this love, without being purified, without purifying your heart from your sins. And this is where fasting and prayer and the spiritual labors and reading the scriptures and learning from the Holy Fathers and living a life in the church and the sacraments are not only important but necessary and cannot be replaced, irreplaceable. Without them you cannot be purified. This is why the personal aspect, your prayer, your fasting, your confession, your spiritual life, and the communion, the corporate aspect, loving your neighbor, struggling in the community with others. These difficult things, the difficult relationships you have, but these are the medicine that God is giving you to be purified in them. They go hand in hand, your spiritual life and the corporate life. Some people like to paint the image of the cross, vertical and horizontal. I'm not usually a fan of these images, but it can work in this case. And there is a danger if we focus on one and neglect the other. If you say, I'm going to end with this. If you focus only on the, your relationship with Christ directly and say, you know what, I fast, I read the Bible, I mind my own business, I don't need the others. It's okay if there's people around me that I don't love. I don't care. This is very prideful and we just explained that. On the other hand, the danger of focusing only on the, let's call it the horizontal way, the others, is very dangerous because then you would think, you'd be thinking that all God wants from you is to be a nice guy. And we call insane Adami. That's not the criteria also. That's not the criteria also. Be a philanthropist. That's not the criteria also. You cannot do that without God. And these have to lead you to God. So they go hand in hand. And the truth, where do we find the truth? Where do we find the balance? Is true love. According to the words of our Lord in today's gospel. God bless you.